to No Tears Frontiers Diaries. Today we're going to talk about the last part of an incredible day where we were going through the passes of the Colorado BDR over some mountains in southern Colorado. And in the previous episode we had been covering the first three passes. And they were slightly difficult, you know, in some sections, but uh, majorly just an awesome, beautiful ride. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it was Cinnamon Pass. And then California Pass, which... Hurricane? Yeah, and finally Hurricane. Yeah. And uh, just beautiful scenery. We had perfect weather. We passed an old ghost town. Um, and you had dropped the bike zero, zero times. times. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, I didn't want to say anything out loud. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I haven't dropped the bike yet. Because there's there were a couple sketchy... Uh, I always dislike going downhill more than uphill just because gravity is an additional force trying to pull me down. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there are some, some sketchy sections where going downhill, loose gravel, um, engine braking in first gear really isn't enough to, to keep the low speed that you need, so I ride the brakes right. a lot. It all depends on how heavy you are, I suppose. And we are very, very... The we bike are very heavy. <laughs> is very, very heavy. <laughs> But with the addition of us and all of our stuff, it can be quite heavy. And also the steepness of the road. Yeah. Um, and so far, everything had been quite manageable. Um, you did an excellent job over some kind of tough sections. Uh, but we did know that this fourth pass was going to be the most difficult of the four that we were going yeah. to try we to do. We were forewarned. And it wasn't that, oh, it's going to be insanely difficult. It was just, mm -hmm. hey, the hardest pass is the last pass. You know, and we... We're also told about Ophir Pass and said, right. yeah, don't do that one. That one's not going to be <laughs> fun to go up on a, on right. a loaded bike. But, and uh, we'd seen videos of that and that looked very, very challenging. Yeah. But Corkscrew Pass, which was this last pass that we were going to do, was, um, we were warned that it would just be the most difficult of these, but again, doable. Yeah. And, but we, our spirits were really high. We were well, like, I was pumped. I was yeah. having a great day. I was like, throw, like if this before was hard stuff, throw whatever, bump the notch up of one. <laughs> exactly. So we were doing fine. And we could see in the distance, uh, you know, because I got my little Google Maps on and I kind of had little, the offline maps downloaded with little stars of the, the actual trail. Because there's a bunch of splits that go off to AT, uh, ATV and side-by-side -side mm -hmm. trails. It's just yeah. a you know, uh, an adventure maze out there that you right. can just get lost in. But I'm looking in the, the in front of us and there's this kind of squaggly, that's not a word. <laughs> squiggly? Squiggly, <laughs> you know, crazy road that goes off and up to the right. And then the mainish road that kind of goes down to the left. And we saw two motorcycles come down. Yeah, I saw that road and I was like, that is not a real road. Like, only these dirt bikes would yeah. be able to handle it. There's, you know, I thought it would go to someone's driveway to a little cabin that he could only get to by dirt bike or something. Yeah. Like, there's just nothing that would be up that way. But then as I'm looking at the two roads and then I look down at my little phone where the GPS is, I see that it's got us going up to the right, and I was like, yeah. well, what? I mean, look, you know, we're from afar, it looks kind of nasty, <laughs> maybe it's not too bad. And going up it, again, I prefer going up than down, going up it wasn't bad. Lean forward, bite the front tire in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just steady progress, and it wasn't bad at all. And yeah. I thought, you know, completely overreacted. And Corkscrew does get a cool name, because it did do mm. one of those, like, uh, NASCAR angled, you know, yeah, roadway like it's things. it's banking like a yeah. roller coaster a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And then we got up to the top, and I was like, well, that was awesome. And then I looked <laughs> down the other side of the pass, yeah. and it wasn't the most insane thing my eyes have ever laid on to, but it was like, you know, baby heads and loose gravel and a lot of twisties going back and forth, but with absolutely stunning scenery and a mm -hmm. panorama. So, but it was definitely living up to its more difficult name. Yes. <laughs> and as we were going down, I have to ride the brakes a lot, as I mentioned before. And like my front 
my front shocks and the forks are they they died a long time ago. I should have replaced them a long time ago. Every time I tap the front brake, we just nose dive like a submarine. Yeah. Um, so user error, right? Not the bike's fault. It's just we beat the heck out of it for mm -hmm. five years. But uh, so I was, I was really reliant and heavy on the rear brake, and going down some of these steep inclines, I like I have done in the past many of times. I burnt the rear brake out. And so now I was solely reliant on the dive button mm -hmm. brake. Um, and we did a couple of the switchbacks successfully, yes. and it was amazing. And I was getting kind of nervous, and I beeped into the intercom to inform <laughs> everybody on board that we no longer had rear brakes, which Marissa yes. never is, is too happy to hear. It was really steep. That was the main problem with it. Yeah, downhill was my enemy. Downhill with loose gravel is just poopy. With no rear brakes, add that onto the list. That's you know makes things even poopier. I mean, I can feel us just kind of sliding over this loose gravel. You know what it reminded me of was Sani Pass. Yeah. In Lesotho, between Lesotho and South Africa. Yeah. This, I mean, it was the same switchback on loose gravel through, you know, through some more difficult yeah, terrain. Yeah, it was the steepness and the loose gravel. And I remember on Sunny Pass... I had the same mental, like, oh my god, I can't believe I haven't dropped the bike. This is absolutely amazing. <laughs> and then I, as soon as that thought, like, went in one side of my mind and out the other, dead fish. And yeah. It was like, ah. Yeah, you dropped it quite a bit on Sunny Pass. Yeah. And I was walking quite a bit. And the... Rocks were so loose yeah, sunny pass. on Sunny Pass that I was walking downhill to meet you and I fell. It was like ice. Like I, it just slipped underneath me and I fell really hard on my shoulder. I mean, I was wearing all of my riding all gear. gear all the time. <laughs> and I hate to say it was hilarious, but I just did like this difficult train on two wheels of really crazy <laughs> crap and I'm bumping around. I get there and I'm like, yay, success. Now all I have to do is wait for my wife. And here she comes trundling, trundling yet <laughs> another <laughs> word that doesn't exist. And she <laughs> falls on her butt. I'm like, come on. But. Yeah, I mean, it, it was very loose. So this pass, Corkscrew Pass in Colorado, was not nearly as loose of gravel, but yeah. still, there was this kind of rutted section in the middle that where water would wash through yeah. that had collected all of these loose rocks. This is similar to Sunny Pass, that loose stuff. And so basically, I think your plan was don't fall off the cliff edge because yeah. there was quite a steep cliff edge and don't get stuck in that rut. Yeah, I was riding the side of the, the wall, if you will, or the mountain side because mm -hmm. dropping on that side is much less potentially dangerous than dropping on the other side. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if I did drop the bike over, the lean wouldn't be so bad as if it goes down in an embankment, then you're nearly impossible. And another right. thing, as soon as we turned on, like, these two motorcycles, these little dirt bikes, uh, oh, yeah. got off and zipped away into happiness. And uh, <laughs> then as soon as we got up there and looked down, all the side-by-sides and ATVs and other motorcyclists, they were all gone. gone. That was, there this was, was nobody. Yeah. Just those two dirt bikes. That, yeah. was, that should have been our first warning that <laughs> yeah. all the other vehicles And we're, we're beefing it up to way. sound like it was really, really difficult. It wasn't insane, but it right. was loose and steep and then abandoned. You but know? we had some handicaps. We were so um, loaded, we were so big and heavy, yeah. and um, no the rear whole, brakes. Yeah, no rear brakes. That that was a big problem as well. <laughs> yeah, but as we went down a couple of them successfully, I was very happy. And then one of the times we were going down, I was hitting loose stuff. It was really crappy to get my rear brakes to activate. You know, uh, like I'd have to pump them like five times before they'd actually grip. So I don't know what yeah. burnt fluid and boiling air bubbles or whatever the physics behind it is. But I was really reliant on my front brake. And as my tire is kind of 
trying to snowplow through some of these uh, loose rocks, I hit my front brake, and it just jackknifed to the left, and we fell over. And yeah. that was like... It wasn't a fast fall. No. It wasn't, you know, going at speed or anything. We're going really slow, just trying to not have gravity pull us yeah. downhill and just trying to get downhill safely. But for some reason, it was still a nasty fall because my left foot, which was along the cliff wall, ended up getting turned the other way underneath the pannier. You all right? Or worse. No, 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 it's worse, it's worse, it's worse. Okay. And it wasn't just for a visual, it wasn't necessarily a, a cliff wall, it was a, a slight embankment full yeah. of stones. And so when we fell over, it was a little bit less than a 45 degree. Right. Um, you know, but we, we fell on rocks and such. Yes. Um, and like, whenever I fall, the first thing I try to do is just to get up naturally and make sure that nothing broke and check on my wife. And so like, I was like, are you all right? And she said, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. It hurts. You know, and I was like, uh oh, this isn't good. And so I pushed the motorcycle up so I can free my legs. Yeah. I said, no, 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 you're making it worse. You're making it worse because... The bike kept falling a little bit onto these, I mean, these rocks were just so loose yeah. um, that as he would move the motorcycle, I could feel the weight of the motorcycle pushing against my foot and making it even worse as it twisted the opposite direction. And I was terrified because this was almost exactly how I hurt my foot in Peru. Yeah. corners of the mountainside there would be this little concrete uh, funnel that would you know collect the water coming off and and yeah. channel it through these funnels down to the river further below and we went over like three or four of them and We're sometimes fine. you splash yeah. through them Psh, yay I mean it's like an inch of water like, it's a millimeter of water yeah. it's crazy but one of them it had algae or yeah. slippery slimy no good nasty stuff it was like an oil slick. It was crazy. And before I knew it, whoosh, the bike's back yeah. end had swung out. Marissa was under the bike. I was a couple feet away from the bike. and That was a really fast one. It was just, yeah, before we knew it, we were down and we had slid quite a ways. And I realized that my foot was twisted under the pannier like that in the opposite direction as it should be going. And um, when Tim had gotten off, I was able to twist myself around and kind of crawl my way out. And I couldn't get up on my foot. No. And I knew and this like, was really bad. I didn't know if we should take her boot off because I've heard, you know, and I think that it's a correct theory that like, like it withholds the swelling. So if you take mm. the boot off and it gets crazy, then getting a boot back on yeah. with a, you know, fracture or right. something is not going to happen. So we didn't take it off. Yeah. But... It had turned out after going to different doctors and hospitals that I had not broken my foot, Yay. but I had torn the muscle that runs along the bottom of the foot. Ooh. And so I was on crutches for six weeks yeah. or so. Um, so that had been my worst injury on the motorcycle. Yeah. And um, so this time in Colorado, when my left foot twisted underneath the motorcycle, I thought, okay, this is going to be the exact same situation. And... I remember how scared you had been well, I in knew, Peru yeah. during this. And I knew that like the first step was me getting us on wet. Like we couldn't just live there until somebody found us because every <laughs> time I touched the bike it hurt her more. And so it's it, it was a crappy scenario, but it was like, well we're both wedged underneath the bike. The bike step one is to get the bike up and let's try to re see what you know, reevaluate the situation. <laughs> 
up. And when I looked at her down to my right, I saw her foot and I like almost immediately threw up. I was like, oh, that's disgusting. That, oh, you know, I swore. <laughs> I, you know, I won't swear on video, but I was like, oh no. <laughs> Expletive, you know, because I knew. It looked it was Bad. disgusting. Your foot doesn't go, her foot twice now has gone that way, <laughs> you know, it, and it's just not supposed to. Um, yeah, and I was scared. I didn't know what was going on. Before I knew it though, she did this little ballerina twiddly twoop, Peter Bell, <laughs> loop de loop, and was like, ta da! Are you okay? Yes. Oh, okay. I looked at your foot and it looked really bad. Yeah, it was. Oh, oh yeah. I'm okay. Oh, thank I'm God. Okay. You and your foot backwards. Ow. <laughs> well, I almost made it out alive. And so I could just twist myself around, and then I stood up, and I was like, oh, I'm fine. I was just <laughs> like, I just saw the most disgusting thing I've seen in weeks. I just, I, I just <laughs> in broke. In weeks. <laughs> I've seen some gross stuff. <laughs> But that, you know, like I, I, did, I knew that her ankle was broken, and I knew it was disgusting, and I don't, I was like, oh no, I don't like, I don't like things when they snap and blood and all that. But and then she again, broken. she does like just, this like little ballerina spin twisted move. around, and I guess I'm flexible, and my foot was totally fine. Now we had just purchased these new motorcycle yeah. boots for me, and it had been under the recommendation of friends who said, look. You need better ankle support. Yeah. Um, and so I got these CD Adventure boots, which have double ankle support on like two either C side. brackets of plastic on either side to help, uh, you know, yeah. the ankle not bend in directions it should. Her old boots, the the BMW Motor Red, uh, all around, all rounds were. They're good. I they're mean, they're good. touring boots, right? So it's yeah. not for the same type of terrain that we were yeah. doing, like this off-road. But those VR ankle stuff. support, just flippity and flappity, you know, were these yeah. like it was hard press. You know? Yes. So so these were very good for um, stability and off-road ankle support. Yeah. Um, and they were not cheap, so we were hoping that they'd be worth it. But I would say. They were so worth yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> because we I mean, had this five hundred dollar boots, so they're not cheap. Yeah, yeah but, but I, I think it definitely saved my ankle because yeah. I'd had a very similar thing happen in Peru, and that had been much worse. So I was really, really happy with the, these no. boots. They're super squeaky, and I do not care because no. I just always remember this fall in Colorado, and I think, well, you know, they they saved my ankle, they yeah. saved my foot, so. That's my really streak all that of matters. not breaking Marissa. <laughs> still going strong. Yes. No so broken hearts, no broken bones. When I got off of the motorcycle and I said, look, I feel fine, I, I feel fine. Um, we took a breather moment. <sighs> Oof. Well, I think I got these awesome boots. Oh wow. Yeah. Because it was a bit of a scary moment yeah. um, to see the motorcycle and my foot like that and we just kind of let, left the bike there for a second and then we finally uh, decided all right it's time to get the bike up and continue down this mountain yeah uh, you went down through the first switch back after that without me and I was like that's yeah. fine you know I, I can walk um, and then after that I jumped on and I was like all right let's let's do the rest of this
down, and then we we butted up with the Million Dollar Highway. Oh my goodness! Once That's we got down, we could have kissed the pavement, and, yeah, and that is some good pavement to kiss because like a million dollars worth. <laughs> such a difference you know coming off of that much off-road uh, I love off-road you have a different pace to it you can really kind of focus in your world with the road and not be concerned about anything else but when you get on pavement there's this smoothness to it yes you have a lot more traffic yeah, and things to worry crazy. about and it's a lot higher speeds but um, it's just wonderful yeah. like you feel like you're gliding just flying on wings through these incredible gorges and ravines. Yeah. It was a wonderful end to our day. And then we had our lunch dinner in Ure at a little place oh, yeah. that had hamburgers. Oh, and yeah. Ure, we'd never been there before. It it's is beautiful. gorgeous. It's like a town just tucked right into those hills, those cliffs all Cliff around bluffs. it. Yeah. Yeah, really, really beautiful. I mean, it's like, I've never been to Switzerland, but... I think it's like Switzerland yeah. and there's just mountains everywhere. We had a conversation with somebody who saw our crazy bike and she was like, oh, I ride too. You know, yeah. and it turned out that she's an adventure rider, her and her husband yeah. go around, mess around. So we had a good little lunch conversation. And we were just deal. feeling good. You know, we basically felt like we'd accomplished something. This was our yeah. first time on any BDR. Yeah. And uh, these were some really tough ones. And so we felt really, really happy with ourselves that yes, we had fallen, but everything had been all right, and we'd successfully gotten up and out through those mountain passes. Yeah. And so, thank you for being an awesome rider. Success. And yeah, from Ure, we took the highway off to Grand Junction to stay the night. So now we were kind of lowering an altitude, or I don't know what it was, but it was like that alpine forest of conifer trees faded away, and it became very flat and more deserty, a lot drier, and yeah. suddenly it started getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Yeah. And I looked down on the motorcycle, on the dash it says how hot the motorcycle thinks it is, and it said like 105 degrees. <laughs> I believe it. That was pretty, pretty toasty. It was very hot. Um, when we got to Grand Junction, it was definitely about 100 degrees out. And uh, it was, the sun was setting though, which was great. We found this little RV park and they had a green lawn space for tents to be set up. And that was really our saving grace. There was huge trees, beautiful shade, um, water that we could fill up with and showers and everything. And we just sat there eating our dinner that we'd packed and yeah. felt very accomplished with the day and watched the sunset through the trees and felt the earth get cooler yeah. <laughs> as the sun set and uh, it was just a wonderful end 
to a wonderful set of mountain passes. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we hope to be seeing you next time where we go through Utah, one of our favorite states ever. So stay tuned. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace.